In our second example, we're going to report on a ratio level variable, someone's willingness to spend on a six pack of craft beer. There's a variable in our data set called max price stone. This is the situation where we showed individuals a six, pack, a six pack of stone beer and asked them what they consider the maximum price to be for this beer while it's still being a good value for the money. And people could select in $1 increments between two and 13. I'm going to summarize these results using the original scale that the data was collected in. Since dollar amounts have a real absolute zero, in other words, zero dollars mean something, this is ratio level data. In my analysis plan, looking back to my cheat sheet, that implies that I should report the mean, the median, the standard deviation, and then in some of the it depends and sometimes categories, I talk to management and what they want to know is what is the highest price that the top 20% of people are willing to pay, sort of the high luxury spenders of the craft beer category. So I'm also going to report some percentile values. Also, thinking carefully through my analysis and discussing with what management's needs are for my report, I determined that they're not particularly interested in knowing the mode, so which one of these precise dollar amounts is most common. They didn't really care about that, and they don't necessarily want to know the frequency percent for each one of these incremental values. So again, through careful thought, I made the decision that I'm not going to include that as part of this reporting and analysis. So to set up our analysis, to follow along, look for the max price stone variable. It's currently in column X for me, but if you've been building and messing with the practice data set, it might be in a different column, so find it. Unlike the previous example, there's no preparation work. The data is in the exact correct format that we want it. We're endeavoring to create the summary table we see in the bottom right hand corner here using the Excel functions that are depicted in the bottom left-hand corner table there. We'll show that actually playing out in Excel in a moment. And notice we're showing the mean, standard deviation, median, and 80th percentile. Again, as a reporting decision, I already mentioned I chose to exclude some of the summary statistics that we might sometimes report for ratio level data. I also notice here that I italicize the standard deviation of max price willing to pay. Um, the reason I elected to do this is because standard deviation is a measure of dispersion. And uh, measure to, measures of dispersion are quite important and actually very uh, insightful for marketing managers. They provide deep insight into whether or not the average is doing a good or poor job of characterizing the totality of the data set. Um, but uh, oftentimes, people who are less familiar with statistical analyses are not so familiar with seeing standard deviation. So I italicized it as a way to sort of flag that it's sitting out as something unique. Okay, so in this example, we want to use the max price stone variable. Here it's in column U for me. And based on our tutorial, our goal is to report the following summary statistics. And I'm just going to start making the table elsewhere. The mean, the standard deviation, the median, and the 80th percentile. So I want all of my functions to go next to it. I'm not going to do any window dressing of this table in this video here. Showed it earlier. So we're just going to do it raw and dirty for now. And you could always clean it up on your own time, right? So our functions are pretty straightforward. For the most part, we just equals the average. We should be pretty familiar with the average function by now. And go ahead and select all 200 and 30 values and I switch that to a money amount there and I'm going to just go ahead and copy control C my average function here and I'm going to paste up here in the formula bar where it says standard deviation why am I doing it this way I like it this way because I already I don't feel like dragging and selecting a whole bunch of times so how the function works here, instead of the word average for standard deviation, it's just S, T, D, E. And as we start typing, we see that there's different standard deviations. We want the standard deviation for a sample. So it's S, T, D, E, V, dot, S. Okay, so we, we grabbed our range already because, of course, we're working off of the same range of values each time. So there's our standard deviation. It really hurts my feelings to see all of those decimal points, so I'm going to clean that up right away. Now for the median, same idea. I'm going to paste in that function, the average function I was already working with. And where it says average, I'm going to replace that with the word median. It's really nice that the Excel functions are pretty clear for these. So 
that's nine, meaning about, about half of my data set is willing to spend below nine dollars and see it at a good price and the other half is about above nine dollars and the median and the mean happen to be close together in this particular uh, variable but that's not always the case right lastly and this is where I have to this one's a little fancier than the other one so I'm going to still I'm still going to work off of my pasted function here average I want it the 80th percentile so how do I do that so I type in the word I replace the word average with per centile and then you need to make a decision whether you're using the inclusive or exclusive meaning does it include or exclude the value cutoff that you're using we're going to use the inclusive if you really want to play around with what the two difference are and they usually don't matter if you have a big enough data set uh, but I'll, I'll use the inclusive one here the rule is you select your array but there's also I have to comma afterwards with this thing called K so I click up into my range and at the end I put a comma and then where it says K it says okay what's the kth percentile which here I actually just type in point oh point eight which is 80th percentile the 80 percent right so I just hit return and sure enough the value eleven dollars shows up and then I would of course clean that table up and make it look really nice for any final reporting in a report and that's it easy peasy you've now mastered a few of the basic summary statistic functions we like to use in Microsoft Excel Now that I've completely set up my table in Excel and I'm looking forward to reporting it in the actual report, I might write something like, the survey asked people to say how much money they would spend from $2 to $13 on a six pack of Stone Craft beer. On average, respondents said they would spend $8.92, standard deviation of $2.50, median of $9, while the top 20% of respondents said they would spend at least $11 on a six pack of Stone. The relatively large standard deviation is indicative of respondents often providing answers that deviated widely from the average. It should also be noted that answers were constrained to a minimum of $2 and a maximum of $13. The results may be distorted by this constraint in the survey questionnaire. This is definitely thorough reporting here. Uh, notice that I pointed out some of the potential limitations in how the survey was implemented in terms of the numbers, right? People couldn't say that they would spend $1 or they would spend $17. So I should note that the values we see here might be constrained. Uh, in reality, I would tend to think that's not too big of an issue. Most people aren't paying $1 um, for a six pack if they drink, if they drink craft beer. We could even go more thorough, right? We could even go deeper into interpreting the median and, and whatnot. But this is a pretty comprehensive report of a simple summary table. A more compact version of this, if we were trying to keep ourselves more concise, could be on average, respondents said a more compact version of this reporting might look like this. On average, respondents said they, they would spend $8.92 on a six pack of stone craft beer. The top 20% of respondents said they would spend at least $11, see table blank, for full summary statistics. Notice here, obviously, I'm much more compact with what I'm reporting on, but at what we lose here is I don't notice the limitations of the measurement, which I don't think is too big of a deal in this particular instance, so that might be a good use of saving of space. Um, but I don't mention anything about the standard deviation or dispersion. That might be a limitation because often management should be made aware of that.